Have you heard of Lil Nas X? This is a rapper that went from being broke to selling out concerts seemingly overnight. Now here's the question. How did he achieve this success so quickly? And to make it more relevant, how can you use some of the techniques that he had to launch your own business into the stratosphere in only five months? Stay tuned to find out. Being an entrepreneur sounds like, yes, another new client. I did it. But it can also sound like, I am really not understanding this technology and I'm feeling so overwhelmed. Am I even cut out for this? That's why I started the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast to help infopreneurs, coaches, and course creators who want to build a business online but are battling technology, overwhelm, procrastination, and even imposter syndrome. Think successfully, think differently, think bigger, and take action by learning tips from an array of business owners, all dropping knowledge on the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. What is up? What is up? What the hell is up, my Dark Horse friends and family? Welcome back to your, I don't know, welcome back to another dose of Leaping Into Success Learning. I'm your Dark Horse host, Tracy Brinkman, and I've been in the coaching course creation online space since the 90s. So got a little bit of experience under my belt, and yet I am here still learning. And that's why I'm here, so I can share with you what I have learned and what I am still learning about course creation, coaching, entrepreneurship, and infopreneurship, which begs the question, who are you? You, and, and, and here's the thing for that. For me, I think that's infinitely more important, but I think you are a driven entrepreneur, or specifically an infopreneur either with or seeking a coaching and online course model in your business, or perhaps hoping to have that very, very soon. Either way, you're here because you're ready to start, restart, kickstart, or just start leveling up with some great marketing, personal, or business tips and results. Very important to have those results in order to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire. It absolutely deserves to be. That's why I'm here hitting you with another solo success episode coming to you straight from the Dark Horse HQ as we dive deep into on, on, infopreneurship, infopreneurship, entrepreneurship, and course creation success by giving you some actionable advice, tips, and steps designed to help you level up your game because we already know there are zero shortcuts to success except for taking those little steps towards your goal every single day. All right, so we got a... A little bit of a different spin on things. And my necklace is jingling there. I gotta keep that quiet. A little bit of a different spin today. I mean, we're not gonna be talking about somebody who's this amazing infopreneur, coach, or course creator. However, has done some amazing things that I think we can learn from. And so let's talk about little Nas X. Now, little Nas was this college dropout, and literally he was sleeping on his sister's couch. His bank less, his bank balance was not just zero, it was actually less than zero, which means he owed in overdrafts and fines to his banks. His prospects were really wah, wah, wah. I got the sound effect here. His prospects were... They were terrible, and no one no one out there would bet on him. That, and they would even bet that they were... He, they would not see him where he ended up five months later, much less uh, l betting on the fact that he's going to get out there and break Mariah's care, Mar Mariah Carey's record for the most consecutive weeks at number one on the charts. Now, most musicians and artists and even entrepreneurs take entirely the wrong approach at work. It, yeah, that probably means you. I know it means me. Uh, I know I've done this. Uh, we've spent all of our time creating the little to no time. Let me rephrase this. We spend all the time on the non-productive stuff, right? And in this case here, I'm really talking about they spent little or no time promoting and marketing. And I think about this, when uh, I talk to fellow podcasters, I think one of the biggest questions I hear from them is, how do I get more people to listen to my podcast? And I usually follow that up by asking them a simple question. Well, how much time do you take producing your podcast, right? 
you know, there's you you get people on the show to chat with them, and I haven't done that in a few episodes. But the first, gosh, hundred episodes was nothing but primarily interviews, and that takes time. You, you have to find the right person to bring on the show. Then you have to coordinate getting them on the show. Then you have to get them on the show. Then you have to spend the time to interview them. Then you have to spend the time going back through that to edit it down and produce it and put it out. There's a lot of work in that. Now, you think about that. There are podcasters out there that will spend, and I'm going to be try to be nice. Uh, there are folks out there that I've heard coming from their lips, not mine, that they spend eight to 16 hours per episode. Oh my God, right? Now imagine the average episode, 30, 45, maybe minutes, an hour. All right? We're not talking the Joe Rogans of the world out there. And then you'll follow that question up by, okay, now how much time have you spent promoting your podcast? So if you put out just four episodes a month and you're spending 16 hours per episode, right? That's 64 hours that you've spent just producing that content, that two to four hours worth of content. How much time did you spend promoting it? Oh, I don't know. A little bit. Yeah, see? So I, I think if they would think of their product or if they thought their product was good enough, that would... Hmm, how do I want to say this? I know. I think they think their product is so good that it's going to sell itself. Well, that's not true, right? And even if it was good enough to sell itself... No one's hearing it, right? If you don't put it in front of people, how can it sell itself? Hmm? So this is where Lil Nas uh, stepped up, right? When Lil Nas uh, X had dropped out of college to pursue music, he spent the majority of his time on Twitter making friends. He discovered that posting memes would win him some followers. And then within no time, he had himself like 30,000 followers. Now, what's this all about? A musician that spends far more time on Twitter posting memes than making music. Music, Yeah, that's right. As an online marketer, you're going to find that building an audience pays far more than creating the perfect product. After all, once you have the audience, you, you could sell affiliate products. You need to create your own products. You don't have to have your own product right now. So if you're one of those entrepreneurs or coaches out there, who don't have their own product yet, find an affiliate product that aligns with you. And I've had episodes about affiliate products. Please go check those out. And, and if I, uh, what I'll do is I'll drop down there in the show notes uh, what the episode numbers were so you can go learn more about that. But let's get back to Lil Nas X here, right? His plan he devised was to use the followers of his Twitter feed to promote his music. But then here's it, right? He ran into a problem. Right, And the problem, as you can imagine, is he would post a, a, a funny meme, right? Some cool picture with words underneath it, and he'd get 2,000 retweets. Then he'd post a song, and he'd get 10. Right? We've all felt that. You know, you're out there, you're doing your thing on Facebook, you're posting all the, the great content, and you post something about your, your service or your product, and you get that wah, wah, wah. And this is where a lot of artists and entrepreneurs might say it doesn't work. Twitter doesn't work. Facebook doesn't work. But here's where Nas got creative. He stopped tweeting music links. And he started writing a song that he could promote through memes. And as he said, it had to be short, it had to be catchy, and it had to be funny. Now think about the memes, right? They're short, right? You can just look at them real fast. They're catchy. Usually there's some cool little image that uh, catches your eye and, and hooks you. Th you know, does that thumb scroll, scroll stop? And they make you giggle. There's something usually funny, whether it's satire or dry humor, it doesn't matter, but it, they're funny. So it's all about giving people what they want rather than what you'd like them to have. Uh -huh. How many times have you heard me talk about that? Here's the thing. Nas wanted him, wanted them to have his songs. His followers wanted short, catchy, and funny instead. So as a result, he made Old Town Road. Nas paired it with a video of a dancing cowboy and shared it with his followers. Now when this video went viral, Nas knew exactly what to do next. 
he made more short videos with the Old Town Road tune and then a full-length song linked underneath. The views started piling up, and Nas went from a completely unknown artist to a rising star. Ah, that was the wrong one. Supposed to be this one. (laughs) He went from an unknown artist to a rising star. Next, he moved from Twitter to TikTok, and then went on to the country, right? Billboard's country music charts. What? Wait, I can hear you thinking, Old Town Road, that isn't a country song. No, it's not. But the country music charts are far less competitive than other categories. Again, Nas was thinking like a marketer. Listing the song as country in order to get it to the top of the charts and get free publicity. Ooh, right? Ah, You can hear the little bells going off. It's magic. Now, mind you, uh, about a week later, Billboard did remove the song for it not being country. As they say, there's, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. And Billboard's decision to uh, turn, turned out to be good for Old Town Road because it got to be a national talking point for the song. Two weeks later, it was number one. Did Nas stop there? Oh, uh-uh. Next, he began creative... Uh, creating creative remixes of some of the music's uh, industry's biggest names. See, Billboard has a loophole whereby a remix play counts towards the original song chart's placement. So with each remix, millions more streaming the song, this uh, started locking Old Town Road into the number one space on the charts. 17 weeks later, Mariah's Carey, Mariah Carey's record for being in number the number one spot for the most consecutive weeks was shattered. Now remember, just five months earlier, Nas was sleeping on his sister's couch with a negative balance in his bank account. Five months. Huh? Five months. What first seemed impossible now seems simple as pie. Now, there wasn't luck involved here, and it wasn't this amazing skill set. Anyone, many of us have done it, anyone can make a funny short meme and videos that can go viral. True, right? You don't have to be a musician, and you might not be a musician, but it doesn't matter. That's the point. Figure out what people will share with others in your niche and give them lots of that to grow your followers. Now, here's a few marketing tips we'll say that are right from Nas. Marketing tip number one. Make your product easy to find. Nas knew that people watching the video would search for the full song. That's why he changed the song title on YouTube and SoundCloud to include the lyrics from the viral video. Viral video. Uh, quote, I think it was, I got horses in the back, right? And he also posted it on a subreddit, name that song, to get ranked on Google. This made it easy for anyone who was searching for the video to find the song. All right. Marketing tip number two. Jump in and take action. Stop sitting around on the couch in front of your laptop at your desk trying to find the next magic bullet. Here's the thing. Nas did not get lucky. Things didn't just happen for him. He made them happen. He didn't wish people would start forwarding his songs. He found a way to make people want to share his songs with everyone else. Amazing tip number three. Market to people the way they want to be marketed to. You see, people really want to share short And funny. So that's what he gave him. He wrote a song that he knew would be infinitely shareable. Some musicians, with no doubt, say that Nas uh, sold out to commercialism. But if you think about it, right, if you want your music to be heard or you want your products to get out there to be sold, you had better darn well find a way to get it to the people and to get the people to want 
to share it, right? We talked about this in a couple of episodes just back behind this one, that if you get it out there and people believe in it, right, they can become your advocates, right? For him, it was these short, funny, catchy snippets, yeah? Marketing rule number four. Play by the rules and win. You see, the Old Town Road is shorter than most songs because you didn't have uh, a last chorus in it. This made listeners replay the song to hear the chorus again. A stream doesn't count as a stream unless it's streamed for over 30 seconds. Would you like to guess how long the chorus is? Yeah, it's just over 30 seconds. By making a small change, but still following the rules, he was able to nearly double his streaming listens. Now, now think about that a second. He had to get them to listen for at least 30 seconds. So he made the chorus 30 seconds. And because they wanted to hear the chorus again, they would re-listen to it. Huh? You see it? Doubling his streaming counts. Promoting the, the video started rising to the top. Here's a thought I want you to really, really hear today. Anything is possible, including massive success in a ridiculously short period of time. Yeah, as, as really evidenced by this story, and we, we've seen other um, stories like this where people just, they came out of the woodwork uh, like gangbusters. Now, some of them weren't you know, laying on their couch five months ago. Many of them had been grinding away, and I'm sure Nas had been grinding away at some point version of his music in the background so that made him gave him the ability to create his music like this and experience his five months meteoric rise to fame now would you bet that someone living on a couch with zero money could unseat mariah carey in five months yeah yeah i wouldn't i mean i wouldn't take that bet and if he could do that if you could do that and you can what else are you capable of? See, going viral is indeed something you can do. Uh, they likely say that if you put out enough great content, sooner or later, some of it, just some of it, might, just might, go viral. It sounds like winning the lottery, doesn't it? But here's the thing. I want you to really listen to this one. If you engineered your content to go viral, as you can see, it was already, it's already been done. He just did it. I just walked you through the story, right? So why not do this for yourself? Pay attention to your market. Study your market. See what does go viral. Heck, don't even focus on what does go viral. Focus on what gets shared. What is it that they are liking and reposting and retweeting and showing loves and dropping comments? Really? Pay attention to it. Take, I don't know, take a week. Take five days and just pay attention to that. Put everything else aside. Make that your, this is your goal for the next three to five days. Look at every post, not just your posts, other posts within your niche. Study your market. See what goes viral, right? Even at a small amount. And then analyze why it goes viral. Then take appropriate action. However, let's let's be clear here. You're going to have to build the audience first. See, that's why you want to take a little time and analyze why things are going viral and uh, and then build your audience. It, it's it's great to create the best ever, biggest and most spectacular product ever engineered. Yeah. But if you have no one to sell it to, does it even matter? Build your audience first. Observe what you want, then give it to them. Just a couple episodes back, we were talking about you know um, the steps for creating um, products, of creating online courses. And one of the first steps is start to market your course right out of the gate. Pre-sell it. Actually, I'm going to come up with a course all about pre-selling, right? Build your audience first. Observe what they want and then give it to them. And as you go through that pre-selling process, that's what you're doing. You're building that audience. 
you're engaging with them, and then you're working into the product idea that you have, the things that they want. It sounds a little backwards, but it is the surest way to success, even if you fail. Wait, what? What what did you just say? What do you mean by that? Well, let's say your niche is online marketing, and you build an audience of 50,000 people on social media, whatever. 5,000, 10,000, whatever it is. You do this through your blog, your email list, or one of your social media accounts. Then you create the best, the most amazing offer to your audience, but you get this uh, kind of reaction, right? It's mediocre. Maybe you sell $2,000 worth, five, ten thousand, 10,000, whatever. It's a nice payday, I don't get me wrong. But it's nowhere near what you hoped. Here's the thing. Guess what? The greatest asset you have isn't the profit from the product you just built. It's that audience you have and the trust that you're building with them. Because you can continue to market to that audience over and over and over and over again with all sorts of affiliate products, your future products, uh, anything you create yourself or that you find that aligns with the audience that you have built. Here's the thing. That product that you just created that only made you a few thousand dollars, it's awesome. It's good, right? Don't get me wrong. Do it. Go through the experience. The next one will be a whole lot easier. But it's really that audience that you built that is going to, to make you rich, going to make going to make you fulfilled. So rich in both ways, right? So build that audience first and you will not fail. And as you heard in here, and you can go out and read more about it yourself, do what little Nas did and pay attention to what it is your audience wants and how they want to receive it. Uh, you know, is your audience on a certain platform? Are they on Twitter? His was. Are yours on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whenever, you know, Mighty Network, I don't know. Where's your audience at? Do they only go to live events? Do they prefer these virtual events, they have, which have become way more popular here, here lately? Find out what it is, where, where they are, how they like to receive their information, their product, their content, what it is that they're sharing. There's that analysis I was telling you. To just take... Take a, you know, an hour a day for a week, and I bet you can figure out really fast, oh, wow, they really like short, snappy videos, or they like catchy little memes. I don't know. Maybe some of them will actually like some long-form content. You will see some long-form content getting forwarded and getting pretty popular. When you find that, pay attention to what's inside. Really pay attention to what's in the very beginning of the long-form content, because quite often they're not really in the whole thing. They're reading the very beginning, and that very beginning is either going to get them to read the rest or get them motivated or moved enough to forward it on. So look at all the posts that are out there, see what resonates with our audience, and then create that that kind of content with your voice and your message to build up your audience. And as you're building up that audience, then you can start asking those questions. What is it? What are your main problems? Maybe you know that. Right. Um, start get offering those solutions. Right. Those little short little snippets of those solutions in the way that they like to receive it in a meme, in a video, in long form content. However, it is now. Start. You're you're building that audience. You're stoking that fire, and then it's time to throw some fuel on it with your product. All right. That's all we got for today. In our next episode, though, I want to share with you some free traffic methods that work even for brand new websites. All right. Now, by the way, uh, um, I know you want to keep getting these amazing episodes. Well, I'll call them amazing episodes because they're mine. Uh, Hopefully you're finding the value and you want to keep getting them. And if you do, please go on down there, make sure whatever platform you're on, you're hitting that subscribe button and leave us a five-star rating. And, And I ask that not because I want you to pump up my ego um, it's more so that it is these ratings, uh, subscribed ratings and reviews that tell whatever platform you're listening to this on, it tells those algorithms that you are getting that value, gives us a little lift in the rankings so we can reach more driven entrepreneur and infopreneurs just like yourself. So please take a moment, show the love and help spread the word. 
In the meantime, get out there, run your race, get your results. Let me hear about that. Serious, right? Tracy at darkhorseschooling.com. Tell me the tip or idea that you came away with, how you put it into action, and what results you got. Heck, you might be featured on an upcoming episode. Until next time, think successfully and take action. Thank you for listening to the Dark Horse Entrepreneur Podcast. And you know this. Thanks for tuning in. Check us out at www.darkhorseschooling.com. All right. My name is Tracy Brinkman. Yeah.